And so for you to manifest, you have to build up, build up in prayer. Because there is a place you pray to where there are coals of fire. That's where your tongue will be touched. And if your tongue is taught, it will be poured when you come back. fresh wine because sometimes for you to walk you need to be intoxicated you need to drink of a new wine in order for your propensities to be activated because there is a river of fire about to begin to flow here and so I prophesy by the spirit of the Lord every one of you here today because I can see in the spirit that some of you mantles are going to rest upon you and so I proclaim by the spirit of God, but graces are not moving. The Lord came to awaken dimensions. Father, everyone with the hand of healing, everyone with the grace for the supernatural, miracle-working dimensions, I activate those graces upon them now, and I decree let the fire of God run through their system, and let there be an awakening. Let there be an awakening from the left to the right, from the front to the back, to the galleries, to the overflows, Take that fire now. Take that fire now. Monte Caparato. You sleep in ordinary. Oramanda Pilagate. Zakata Variatanash. Let it down, oh, river flow in your church once again. Let it on it be seen. River flow, river flow. Let it down, oh, river flow in your church once again. Let it on it be seen. Those of you by my left on the gallery, lift your hands toward heaven. Those of you here, there is a fire for evangelical dimension. 
angel. There is an evangelical mantle coming upon someone here to step into territories and to harness souls for the kingdom. Father, whoever that one is, you have brought him with that fire. In the name of Jesus, take that fire now. Help your emotions. In your church, once again, let it on it in this River flow, river flow. Let it on a river flow. In your church, once again, let it on it in this Thank you, Holy Spirit. Please help them there. There is a strong unction descending on people. Help them, help them. Maraka Velakaya, Zagira Paro, Savaradana, Zaganda Parigapa, Javila Paragiro, Zondro Kaba, Lakabanda Riga Paradasta, Rakiba, Roparate. Yes, that when I came unto you, I did not come with excellency of speech, declaring unto you the counsel of God. Yes, that I came with the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith may not stand on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. I launch you into the graces of God. I launch you into the dimension of the supernatural. Marako Barakira, Ragaba Sadana Chagaba, Ragira Panda Sorabate. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hmm. There's somebody on this row here. There's a prophetic dimension on your life. You have been seeing dreams. I help that person. I come to awaken that order. You will not just see, but the power to perform. In the name of Jesus, take that fire now. Take that fire. What shall send that one? Thank you, Father. Father, we honor your name. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the glory. We give you the glory. precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Close to that third pillar there. Please hear this. In the precious name of Jesus. Close to that, that third, one, two, three. In between where that fan is standing. I'm seeing somebody with a heart complication. Your heart is beating faster. And it's beginning to cause a challenge. Dear, where that fan is. Come here quickly. The Lord is about to touch you. Sir, place your hand on your chest where you are standing. In the name of Jesus, I cause that affliction. Okay, come, come. Since it's coming, come. Please help her, help her so she's not injured. No, stand. In the name of Jesus, I cause that affliction. Go now. Thank you, Father. I cause that affliction. Leave him forever. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm seeing a vision now. I'm seeing the Lord cleaning some people's eyes. You have short sightedness. You have glaucoma. Every eye defect. Right now, in the name of Jesus, according to the visions of the Lord, everyone with an eye challenge, you couldn't see before or you couldn't see where. I command those eyes, open now. I command those eyes, open now. I command those eyes, open now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody with a partial deafness. Hear this, please hear this. On that gallery there, towards the back. Close to that arc there. I'm seeing somebody with a partial deafness condition up there God has touched you already something has happened to somebody who came with an ear condition there's somebody there like that 
Can I see that person? If you are there now, can you run to the front here? That affliction is gone forever. Forever. And everybody that came here with an eye condition, if you check your eyes now, you will discover you have already been touched. You are cleansed. You are perfected. In that, my God. My God. My God. Please be sensitive. Beyond the cases I'm calling, God is touching people. Close to that brother there. That brother lifting his hand. Just before the camera. I'm seeing somebody that was you are suffering from excruciating pain on your throat. You couldn't even swallow. And it looked as if a growth was about to be formed. I'm seeing somebody there that the Lord has touched in the middle here. If you had that pain somewhere on your neck, it was an excruciating pain. You could not even swallow. I saw it now like a trance. Is there anybody there? Please help that sister running. So she's not injured. And out of my belly shall flow. give you praise in Jesus precious name in the precious name of Jesus in the precious name of Jesus thank you father thank you father thank you father we give you praise in Jesus precious name if you can, please be seated for a moment. Please be seated. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Don't stress them. Just allow them. Allow them when they recover, they will find their way to their seats. outside I'm seeing some people around here we have people outside I'm seeing somebody that had something like an accident in the name of Jesus I'm seeing someone that has an accident and you've had this pain on your knee and this person is outside this auditorium you've had difficulty in walking if you would stand up and stretch that leg you will discover that pain is gone completely if you will check that now, you will discover that pain is gone. Thank you, Lord. Tomorrow evening, we will be praying for the sick. Please find somebody, you had an accident, it has fractured your bone. And it's affecting your mobility. I'm seeing God stretch somebody's bones. Perfecting your mobility. That demonic pain is gone forever. Thank you, Father. How many of you had eye conditions before now, but now you can see well? You can see. Your eyes have already been touched. I'm seeing hands. How many of you? You had an eye problem. Now you can see well. 
You can see well. Can I see your hand? You can see well. Look at that. God has already touched more than 10 persons. Those of you that had eye conditions but you can see now, can you stand up? Can you stand up? Just stand up. Just stand up. Come to the altar. Come here, please. Everybody who had an eye condition, you couldn't see where, but now you are already healed. Come. Please help her. Please help her. Please help her. Please help her. Pastor Patrick, help her quick. Thank you, Lord. I don't want to take it for granted. That's why I'm calling you to come out. You had an eye problem, Mama. But you can see now very well. Can somebody give her the microphone? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mama, Mama, you are walking with a stick. Mama, you had an eye problem. You couldn't see well. Are you seeing where well now? Come up. Why are you now using the stick? Come up. Give me the stick. God can't heal your eye and forget your leg. Come up, mama. Lift the stick up, ma. You can walk without it. Lift it up and come up. Lift it up and come up. Don't be afraid. Come. God will heal your eye and forget your leg. You had a challenge with your leg. What happened? The medical condition. Arthritis. Arthritis. So you have pains on the back. Is the pain still there? The other leg. So you could feel. You can feel pains there. No, the pains will go now. What leg is that? <laughs> pains in the name of Jesus. I command you. Go now! Go now! Go now! Mama, look at me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Mama, walk that way and walk back. Walk fast. Don't be afraid. And let's see that devil that will stop you from walking. Somebody give the Lord a shout! He said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That pain is gone forever. Mama, how do you feel? Better, much, much better. Come on, lift it higher. Somebody give the Lord a shout. It's permanent. And you couldn't see well before. My vision is not very clear and I've been diagnosed with uh, glaucoma. You were diagnosed with glaucoma. So what happened now? In fact, I can see clearly now. You can see clearly now. My eyeglasses. Look at me. Even without your eyeglasses. Mama came with a stick. Mama came with glasses. Look at what Jesus has done. She doesn't need it anymore. Give the Lord a big show. Glaucoma is gone forever. Do you still need your eyeglasses? In fact, like before I cannot see down there without my eyeglasses. Before you couldn't see down there without your eyeglasses. Yes. And now you can see clearly. Yes. Wow. Yes. Is that how you celebrate miracle in Yola? All of you standing here, you had eye conditions. And you have been healed. Dear Lord Jesus, I saw the Lord cleaning people's eyes. And so I knew God was doing something. Somebody give the Lord a shout! Your healing is permanent in the name of Jesus. We can't take the healings tonight. So what you do for us is you write it down and submit to the protocol. We'll take them tomorrow. Tomorrow is miracle service number two. God bless you. Your miracle is permanent in the name of Jesus.
Glory to God. Mama, you can do what you want to do. God bless you. You may go back to your seat. See the number of persons the Lord has touched already. Eye conditions. Tomorrow God will heal divers infirmities. In the name of Jesus. I have 15 more minutes. <laughs> when, when a bishop wants to, to teach, you know, he's not just doing exegesis, but many years of experience, of power, and of working with the Lord, is backing it. And then when an archbishop wants to preach, then you better give away from the altar. <laughs> I will just say one or two things from the word, and then I'll sit down so that we can all receive. Daddy has asked me that for the first night I should talk on defeating the powers of darkness through the power of prayer and the world. I don't have the time to go into the subject matter. I'll just read one scripture to show you how vicious and wicked the devil is and the reason why we must make prayer a lifestyle many assume that prayer is part of our religious rituals prayer is not a ritual it's an insurance system that engenders the power of God needed for victorious living if you don't have this understanding you will be useless and defeated by the devil because the devil knows that God has a purpose for which he created you and for which he sent you into the world at this time if you take it for granted you will be the only person who is not aware that a purpose is resting on you God is aware angels are aware and demons are aware God has played his part Angels are playing their part for you to fulfill your purpose and demons are working night and day to stop you. You probably are the only one reluctant about your life and your destiny. And so tonight, one of the calls that God has sent me here to bring to you, please help the sister running. Help them so they are not injured. It's a wake-up call to the ministry of prayer and the word. And I will show you why you must not just pray, but pray as a way of life. Because your existence will depend on your effective dispensation of prayer. But before we begin, let's look at John chapter 10 verse 10. Jesus was speaking. And this is, this is the prince of peace. This is the everlasting Lord himself talking. Just in case you don't know who he is. The book of John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3 gave us a boisterous introduction of who he is. In case you mistake him for an ordinary man. He said in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Or he said that which was from the beginning. Can you project it for me very quickly? The Bible was trying to introduce the personality called Jesus. He said in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. He said the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was there nothing made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. He gave us four credentials of who the person called Jesus is. Number one, he said he is God. Number two, he said he is creator. Number three, he said... Everything we know is the one who animates it. He is life. And number four, he said the reason our existence can find meaning is because he issues light. And in the context of that light, every one of us find meaning and purpose. And so he is God, he is creator, he is life, and he is the light of men. And so when you read John 10.10 10, and Jesus is talking, you need to understand that the one talking is the ancient of days himself in human form. And this is what he said. He said there is a personality that has come. He said the devil is his name. He said the devil cometh not but for to kill, 
to steal and to destroy. In case you are walking through time and you think life is about getting something to eat and drink, he's telling you that you don't have to do anything to have an enemy. He said, an enemy has chosen you. And this enemy has the capacity and the propensity of wickedness to kill, to steal, and to destroy. However, he said, I am come that you might have life and life to the full. And so even though your foe is one who is vicious enough, wanting to kill, to steal, and to destroy, he said, you are not hopeless. He said, I am come. If the devil were the only one who came, then humanity would have been doomed. But the good news is that he is not the only one who came. However, it's important for you to understand these two entities so you will know how to draw from them. You see, when it has to do with the devil, he's the one looking for you to destroy you. So you don't need to do anything for the devil to access you. And so there's an enemy who is fighting so hard to destroy your existence. However, there is an answer for you. But the problem is that there is a protocol for harnessing the possibility that is locked up in Christ. This is why even though we are all Christians, some are sick, others are not sick. Some are poor, others are not poor. It means the devil has visited everybody. But for God to reach you, you must access him. He said, I stand on the door and knock. Whoever opens, because God will not violate your will. The devil will violate your will, but God will respect your will. And so why the devil is haunting you, if you are wise, you will chase after God. Because you don't need anything for the devil to find you, but you need to do something to find God. Because the devil has come to destroy. The devil has come to kill. And the devil has come to make useless your existence. And so if you are here tonight and you have not made it a preoccupation to find God, it means in the spirit you are ignorant. Because you think life will happen to you. You think life is a function of luck and chance. It's not. Two spirits are walking through the earth. One is your salvation. The other is your destruction. You have to invite your salvation in order to make the most of him. But your destruction don't need an invitation. In fact, he came first. So he will locate you first. This is why calling upon the name of the Lord desperately must become the very dictate of our existence. The devil cometh not, but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. If I had time, I would have shown you the structure of the demonic realm. You know, Paul was speaking in 2 Corinthians 2.11. He said we should not be ignorant of his devices. Because it's possible for you to underrate the devil. It's possible for you to undermine the devil. It's possible for you to look down on the devil. And if you do, you will regret it. Take a look at the earth, for example. When you go to the hospital, you know, for a conference like this, we needed to print billboards to let you know something is happening for you to come. The hospital don't need billboard. They don't need advertisement. You pay money, yet you will never find the hospital empty. The hospital's problem is space. Every hospital is looking for more space because every day people who are in crisis are churned there in their number. So when you see the kind of damage and decadence happening in the world, it should educate you that the devil is not a creature to take for granted. Even though he's defeated in Christ, he is a foe that fights and he fights like a roaring lion. When you look at the immorality in society, it should advise you that the devil has a system, an intelligent system that he walks through. He's not just somebody roaming about without coordination, without order. The devil is highly systematic. The devil is highly strategic. And so believers must learn the way of prayer in order to overcome the devil. You know, when Paul was speaking in Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10, he began to advise us to stand. Because it's possible for you to lie down and to relax and tell yourself, if it will happen, it will happen. Nothing happens. Everything you see happening is made to happen. There is nothing like if it will happen, it will happen. Paul said, having done all to stand, he said, stand therefore. He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And he began to give us an intelligence into how the demonic structure is created. He said, we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness, and against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. So there is a structure and there is an order that the demonic realm has put in place. If I had the time to teach tonight, I would have taken time to show you what a principality is. A principality is a prince in the demonic realm. Because if you are studying about spirits, there are spirits that are messengers. And there are other spirits that are rulers. Not every spirit is a messenger. If you look at light, 
angels are messengers but heaven as a host that is beyond angels there are seraphims in heaven there are dominions in heaven there are different princes in heaven that are not messengers some of them their job is to sit on thrones in heaven and to co rule with god and so when john entered heaven he saw 24 thrones and he saw other creatures sitting on those thrones just the way god has a throne there are other spirits too that have a throne and the job of those spirits they never go on errand their job is just to enjoy intimacy with god from time to time that's all they were designed to do so in the spirit realm there are spirits that are princes and there are other spirits that are messengers now when some angels rebelled they fell from the angelic order but it doesn't mean they became messengers even in the demonic realm they remain princes those are the ones who instruct demons and so what paul was teaching us in ephesians chapter 6 he was not talking about demons now when you meet a demon you can say in the name of jesus go out and the demon will go because a demon does not have the legal right to occupy anything he's a disembodied spirit but you see when you meet a prince and you say in the name of jesus he will tell you jesus i know he will help you call the name you know when jesus was fasting on the mount of transfiguration the devil came to him and said if you are the son of god now when jesus finished fasting you should know that the anointing on his life should be most volatile but you see this is not a demon a demon sees him and tremble a principality comes to him and is trying to bargain for power and authority he said if you are the son of god turn these stones to bread paul the bible said the sons of skiva went to cast out demons they didn't know that the person there was a prince and when they started speaking before they said jesus the, the, the demons told him jesus we know paul we know who are you you will think if you call the name and they hear they will tremble these ones are princes there is a law that dictates how they function and so if you are calling the name of jesus and you are not under the authority of jesus you cannot walk against the prince because when you come against a priest and you say in the name of Jesus, he will say, but you fornicated yesterday. Who Jesus are you talking about? Because the only time you can use this name here is when you yourself, you are under his government. If you are not under his government, you cannot use that name. Because they will ask you first, who is talking? What makes you feel you have the right to call that name? So when believers are not aware, they will think every spirit is a servant spirit. Not every spirit is a servant spirit. They all bow to the name of Jesus, but it determines who is using it. He said, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. But who is using that name? When you come and you say in the name of Jesus, they will ask you, do you have the revelation of that name? If you come and you say in the name of Jesus, they will ask you, are you under the authority of that name? You who changed figures of money in your office yesterday and stole one million. Are you the one now coming to say in the name of Jesus because you are wearing a suit? Don't you know I am a prince? In the realm of princes, we function by the laws of the spirit realm. And you have violated the law so you don't have the right to call that name that's how the demonic realm work if you don't know that these beings have a system and a structure that is regulated by spiritual laws you will take things for granted and so when you begin to see the things happening in the world you will understand the place of priesthood not just prayer because priesthood is superior to prayer prayer is one of the ways of exercising priesthood but priesthood is the act of coming under the government of god and so if you are not under the government of God, you may carry the name of Jesus because you went to a Bible school and you will call it a half cancer. They bow to the authority of that name, but they want to know who is using it. Because if the person using it is not under the government of that name, that name will not be powerful in his mouth. That's why five Christians can stand and say in the name of Jesus, the manifestation will not be the same. The manifestation will always be different. The manifestation will prove who is using that name. Because it's not just about the name, it's about who is using it. And so the art of using prayer to discomfit darkness is beyond religion. The art of using prayer to discomfit darkness is a structured oppression in the spirit realm. That although you have the name of Jesus, which is the strongest weapon, but you have to come under the government of the name of Jesus. And so the prayer that destroys the power of darkness is first of all the prayer that transforms that's why we are talking prayer in this matter if your prayer does not transform you you have no authority against the powers of darkness please make no mistakes about it there is a move of prayer currently going on and people think prayer is about volume 
and about posture. And so you find young people praying and shouting because they sweated and their suit is wet. They think it's power. Sweat is not power. Sweat is not power. Make no mistakes about it. The first thing that happens to you if you want to fight against the devil is to make sure that your prayer begins to transform you. That lying tongue must come under government. That heart that deceives must come under government. That lead that is quick to go into immorality must come under government. And so the first thing prayer does is to transform. That's why the Bible says we all with open faces beholding as in a glass. Because prayer therefore becomes the art of beholding. The more you behold the glory, the more your own life is edited. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Ask of me, I will answer. But I don't stop by answering. He said, I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. So the moment a man begins to pray, what God does is that he opens the theater of the spirit realm and he begins to edit his life. He will begin with your tongue. He will begin with your feet. He will begin with your heart posture. Because what God wants to achieve is to make sure that the name of Jesus is powerful in your mouth. Because God has given you a weapon, but there is a qualification. Hope you know that if I bring a magazine here now and I give you that you have a gun does not mean you can kill anybody. The gun is powerful. Everybody can be shot dead by the gun. So the problem is not the potential of the gun. Who is using it? That's what Christians have not yet settled down to study. Everybody is quoting the name of Jesus is above every principalities and power. It is correct, but who is using the name? Who is using the name? That's the question we have not answered. Every knee bows. Who is using the name? Because two people can have a gun. One will kill himself, the other will kill his enemy. It depends on if you know how to handle it. And the first law that the spirit realm insists on, anyone who is using that name, is that they must be purged. And so the ministry of prayer comes to activate the fire that purifies. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19, he said the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. He said, therefore the Lord knoweth them that are his. He said, they that name it the name of the Lord must depart from iniquity. So if you don't depart from iniquity, you don't have the right to use the name of the Lord. And so when a man truly begins to do priesthood and the ministry of prayer, transformation becomes a law. So the power of your prayer is not how long you have prayed. How long you have prayed is important because you need to build spiritual discipline. But the power and the efficacy of your prayer is the degree to which your prayer transforms you. The Bible said in Matthew 17 verse 2, it said as he prayed, he said the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment began to glister. The moment prayer brought transfiguration, the Bible said he descended from the mountain and he found a boy that was deaf and dumb. And the apostles were trying to rebuke the spirit and the spirit will not go. Meanwhile, these same people went out first and cast out a lot of demons in Matthew 10. How come they are struggling now? Because their garment is stained. Their faith level has depleted. And so even though they are using the same name they used before, now it's not producing result. The moment Jesus came down and the spirit saw him, the Bible said the spirit threw the child down and left him. Because the one who is coming has no blame. He said, the prince of this world cometh to me and findeth nothing. If we want to raise a generation that will deal with the powers of darkness and hear this, I wish I had time to talk to us so that we know what is happening in the last day. Iniquity is systematized now. Today, nobody is even talking immorality. We are battling with, with perversions at the level of LGBTQ. People are not even talking about whether it is right or wrong to fornicate. They are talking about higher levels of propensity in iniquity. Where a man does not even have enough pleasure being a man. He wants to convert himself to a woman and see how women feel. That's the world we are living in. This is a world today where people are no longer even satisfied with the energy that comes with a mortar. So they are using machines now to satisfy their appetite. Is that the world that you will stroll into and tell the person Jesus loves you and you think all will be well? The brain has been reprogrammed. Even if a demon is not involved, there are endocrine secretions now that they cannot do without. You need a power that can remobilize the person's molecular structure. So that when you talk, even the brain will be reprogrammed. That's where we are in iniquity. Is it the devil that has affected the government system of nations? That today, government is aligning with the devil in order to usher in the Antichrist. 
is that the word you want to stroll in because you have two verses of scripture? Is that the word you want to stroll in because you graduated from the Bible school? Do you know the dark programs that they are bringing into the financial sector? Do you know the dark programs that are in the corridors of power? Ask yourself, people who know will tell you. Even the last election that was conducted, the heads that rolled, the virgins that were slaughtered. You think people just come and speak English and then they come into corridors of power? As I'm talking to you now, people are swearing oaths before they come into different offices, surrendering their soul and giving full allegiance to walk in iniquity, to walk in perversion, and to walk in compromise for the next eight years. You think that is the kind of system you want to come and preach an intelligent message? An intelligent message is not enough. When you appear, you need to have authority in the demonic realm that when you talk, even the princes that rule over government will know that the oracles of God has been communicated. Because there is a voice that affects the ears of men. But there is another voice that peers through even Hades itself. That when a man says, Lazarus, come forth, even death cannot hold him back. That kind of power is not a theological seminary that gives it. That kind of power comes because you have appeared before the, the crystals. The glass in the presence of God. You have appeared before the light that stands in his throne room and your life has been edited. And so when you go out, the devil can find nothing in you. That's when you can command and principalities will fall from their throne. If they find anything in you, you are a slave. Because whoever you use yourself, servant to obey, the servant of him you are, whom you have obeyed. You cannot be a slave of a God in darkness and come to address darkness. They will kill you. You don't have that authority. You don't have that clearance level. And so in addition to the weapons God has given to us, we must bring ourselves under the government of God. And what prayer does is to bring you to that place where you are purified. To bring you to that place where you are purged. To bring you to that place where you are refined. So when you go out, you are not just going out with the name of Jesus, but you are going out as a bonafide member in the armies of Zion. The first thing prayer does is transformation, is transfiguration, is transubstantiation until nothing in you can give the devil authority over what you do. The second thing prayer does is to release the power of God. The power, the power. There is power locked up in our spirit, but there's a technology of re releasing it. It said in Ephesians 3.20, he said, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above what you can ask or think, but there's a condition. It's according to the power at work in you. And so if there's no power at work in you, God will not be able to do this is why many Christians are victims. Because even though God wants to do, God is not able to do because there's no power at all. The power, the force of the spirit that awakens that power is when you enter the engine room of prayer. You know, when we are kneeling there and we are groaning in the spirit, it's beyond the sweat. Something is happening in our spirit, an activity. It's like the refinery. For those of us who study chemistry, you know that crude oil is called black diamond. That's one of the wealthiest liquids you can find, but it is useless in a crude form. When you expose it to heat in the refinery, then different reaction begins to happen. In the fractionating power, as the oil begins to ascend, the oil begins to separate. A point will come where you'll find bitumen. A point will come where you'll find petrol. A point will come where you'll find diesel. A point will come when it will even become volatile and you will find butane. At that level, it can burn you. That's how the power at work in the believer is, but it's in a crude form. A believer who can raise the dead can die with that anointing. A believer who should heal the sick can die with sickness. The problem is that he has not exposed his spirit to the refineries of God. When you go to the place of prayer, you will notice that the first thing that will start attacking prayer is flesh. Because the flesh knows that what you are doing is to deaden it so that the potentials of your spirit will come alive. If you are able to tarry there until flesh is silent, then you will discover that there are propensities in you that you have never known. You will come out of the place of prayer and suddenly you can look at a place and you will know a demon is there. And you will address that demon. You will come out of the place of prayer and you will talk and suddenly you will discover the words you speak is no longer how sir. They become spirit and life. Because we were not sent to speak only human language. We were also spent to speak ancient and immortal language. Jesus said the words I speak. They are spirit and they are life. What is the economy of God that converts those potentials to become dynamic? It's prayer. We have too many preachers but less intercessors. People rise up 
look for messages online, shuffle it together, and come to preach messages that they didn't know where came from. Even music artists today, they just walk around collecting on the radio. They are only interested in money. They don't even have anything from their spirit. And when they discover they are dry, they will look for anointed songs and sing. Because the song itself has anointing inside. It's not about the singer. Anybody who sings that song, they will be unsure. And so because their spirit man is dry, they look for a song that a man who has a robust priesthood downloaded from heaven. And they carry that song on their shoulder like a weapon. Meanwhile, their own spirit cannot receive anything. How can you say you are a psalmist and you can't pick melodies from heaven? How, how, how can you say you are a psalmist? And then you now have seven backup singers. You have uniform. You are traveling on business class. Charging people five million to come and perform. The other, it's, it's actually performance. The other day they told me one was charging 20 million. And I said, how much did they put the whole conference together? If they have to give you 20 million for coming to sing for 10 minutes. Even God knows that some of us will not make that mistake. Because I know God does not hear melody. God hears spirit. And if there's no spirit in you, there's nothing here. Too much potentials. Buried. Do you know that the number of us who are here today are more numer numerous than the church Jesus started with? Jesus started with 120 men. They changed their world. And so we have grown into a generation that prides ourselves in number and not in stature. And so we can be 10,000, but our city is dying. The Bible says, Paul and Barnabas, every city they enter, they turn it upside down. What is the kind of Christianity they have? These guys were volatile. If they enter a territory, the princes know that men have come there. They will tell you, these men that cause havoc in the other city have come to our own city. But in our place today, we have churches are even more numerous than the number of disciples in the early church. But yet, you can't see anything. Because we only have potentials that have not translated. Many are not praying. Some preach prayer, some sing prayer, but many are not praying. If you start praying, it will show. It cannot hide itself because what God locked in you will be released. I heard a story of a preacher that was invited for a convocation in the United States. It's a ritual. You know, most of the universities there began as mission institutions. And so in order to maintain their culture and heritage, they have these things they do all the time, especially during convocation. And one of the things they do is to attack five minutes for a preacher to come and recite Psalm 23. And if he has two exhortations, he should give. And so they just do it. You don't even know it's part of the program. But it's necessary because of the ancestry. They now made a mistake and invited an intercessor. And when the intercessor came for the convocation, he carried the Bible and he said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pasture. He restored. As he was saying it, people began to scream. Holy Ghost baptism began. Before he finished reciting Psalm 23, people were on the floor baptized, including the graduates. He didn't preach a sermon, but he was too alive. He was too alive in the spirit for him to talk for five minutes and God does not move. The way spirits are mobilized is through words. But a spirit will not be mobilized except as your spirit man itself is on fire. Benihim told us a story when we met him in Lagos. He said there was a girl that was demonized. The father was wealthy and they were in Israel. The man called all the national preachers that he knew because he had the money. They prayed, nothing happened. A point came, the man became frustrated. He now called manans and enchanters. They did their own, it was not working. But there was this poor nuisance that was under the feet of the mountain that was always saying some language that he didn't know. This guy prays in tongue every day. And he now said, let's try this person since nobody is working. We have gone everywhere, nothing is working. And the day that brother told him, I am coming, the demon began to rebel in the house on the mountain top. And when the hour came, the brother was walking towards the house and was just chanting Psalm 23. The moment he knocked on the door, every demon left the gear. Power is not tied to. What is your spirit commanding per time? If you want the version of you that God has ordained to manifest, you must cook yourself in prayer. You must dwell in the place of prayer. Refuse to be ordinary. It's a cause to be an ordinary person. 
But what will awaken you is prayer. That's why even Jesus, the Son of God, the Bible said in Mark 1.35, early in the morning, he went to a solitary place. There he prayed. Jesus never entered the city. Jesus will always enter the city from the mountain top. And because he came from a higher ground of prayer, every day he enters the mountain, every demon knows that the prince has come. Why are you where demons are? Yet they don't notice you are there. Why are you where evil is taking place? Yet they don't notice you are there. Meanwhile, you are a deacon in church. You are an apostle. You are a prophet. You are a pastor. You have all the titles that brings honor. But there is no witness on your life. Jesus didn't send preachers into the world. He sent witnesses there. He said, go into all the world and be witnesses unto me. There is something in your spirit that will make you a witness. Only prayer has the capacity to go deep enough to excavate it. And when that thing manifests, the way you know it is not in your grammar. It's the fact that demons will begin to respond. When Jesus came down from 40 days of fasting and prayer, he went into the same synagogue that he has been entering for 30 years. Without talking, demons began to scream. Why have you come before your time? We will not address demonic entities. Even though we have the most powerful weapon, which is the name of Jesus, except as we begin to unlock the things that the Lord has put in our spirit. I am persuaded that before this conference is over, your divine side will begin to manifest. I am persuaded that before this conference is over, even you, it will be said, we knew him after the flesh, but not anymore. Because seated on the seats I'm looking at here are prophets, are apostles, are evangelists, are pastors, are teachers, are agents of power. But prayerlessness have kept us ordinary. This conference will not leave you ordinary. Most of you will return to your jobs and the job will respond because you are coming in another version. I pray for you today that the hand of God that transforms will come upon you. And the brightest version of you will begin to manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. If you were blessed by this message you just listened to and you wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, kindly repeat the prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that He died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just said this prayers, please send us an email at info at encounterjesusministry.org or info.egfi.ng at gmail.com. You can also visit our website at www.encounterjesusministry.org. And the day that brother told him, I am coming, the demon began to rebel in the house on the mountain top. And when the hour came, the brother was walking towards the house and was just chanting Psalm 23. The moment he knocked on the door, every demon left the gear. Power is not tied to. What is your spirit commanding per time? If you want the version of you that God has ordained to manifest, you must cook yourself in prayer. You must dwell in the place of prayer. Refuse to be ordinary. It's a cause to be an ordinary person. But what will awaken you is prayer. That's why even Jesus, the Son of God, the Bible said in Mark 1.35, early in the morning, he went to a solitary place. There he prayed. Jesus never entered the city. Jesus will always enter the city from the mountain top. And because he came from a higher ground of prayer, every day he enters the mountain. Every demon knows that the prince has come. Why are you where demons are? Yet they don't notice you are there. Why are you where evil is taking place? Yet they don't notice you are there. Meanwhile, you are a deacon in church. You are an apostle. You are a prophet. You are a pastor. You have all the titles that brings honor. But there is no witness on your life. Jesus didn't send preachers into the world. 
he sent witnesses there. He said, go into all the world and be witnesses unto me. There is something in your spirit that will make you a witness. Only prayer has the capacity to go deep enough to excavate it. And when that thing manifests, the way you know it is not in your grammar. It's the fact that demons will begin to respond. When Jesus came down from 40 days of fasting and prayer, he went into the same synagogue that he has been entering for 30 years without talking. Demons began to scream. Why have you come before your time? We will not address demonic entities, even though we have the most powerful weapon, which is the name of Jesus, except as we begin to unlock the things that the Lord has put in our spirit. I am persuaded that before this conference is over, your divine side will begin to manifest. I am persuaded that before this conference is over, even you, it will be said, we knew him after the flesh, but not anymore. Because seated on the seats I'm looking at here are prophets, are apostles, are evangelists, are pastors, are teachers, are agents of power. But prayerlessness have kept us ordinary. This conference will not leave you ordinary. Most of you will return to your jobs and the job will respond because you are coming in another version. I pray for you today that the hand of God that transforms will come upon you and the brightest version of you will begin to manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. You drop in prayer because there is a place you pray to where there are coals of fire. That's where your tongue will be touched and if your tongue is taught, it will be purged. When you come back, you can become a prophet.